Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new segment here at Sports Night that we're calling Weekly Pick'em. I'm Ethan Four, alongside Sam Johnson. We'll run through this weekend's slate of Northwestern games. But first, let's introduce our guests. We're joined by our two sports directors here at Sports Night, Abriel Siregar and Chris Burton. Fellas, how are we? Doing good. I'm, I'm happy to be here, happy to be part of Sports Night history. Um, yeah, excited. Yeah, we're, as the inaugural guests, we're just hoping that we don't tank the show. So, I mean, it's very likely that we do tank the show, and this is the first and last episode, but um, we're just trying to not be those people. We hope Ponce and Davis come on next week, and then, and then that could be it. You know what I mean? We don't be, we don't be the last show. Well, before we start, I just want to thank you, our sports directors, for recognizing that me and Ethan almost have fortune-telling abilities when it comes to predicting games. And we'll be able to lead people in the right direction before the games even happen. So thank you for that. We felt uh, it would have been um, we felt it would have been just irresponsible not to give you the show. I think. <laughs> I well, think we appreciate it. Around. Let's start. Um, There's a good yeah, go for basketball it. game on Sunday. I want I want to hear Ethan talk about it a little bit first. I, I'm pretty confident, but I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, well, I mean, Northwestern dominated like a really good Ohio State team on Monday, a team that had only lost one one game entering the week. And you've got a backcourt of Veronica Burton, Lindsey Pulliam, and, and Sydney Wood that's basically as good as it gets in the Big Ten. Like, I would honestly, like, put it up against probably any backcourt in the in the NCAA. It's just that – it's that good. Like, the only, I guess, like, downfall of, of Northwestern basketball this year is a lack of, like, true size down low. I mean, every game they've lost – They've been out rebounded, so like that's that's the only like, you know, flaw I guess you could say of this team. Uh, when it comes to Michigan State, you have to figure out a way to somehow contain Nia Cloudin. I mean, she's averaging 19 points a game, which is fifth best in the Big Ten. But I I, I have a hard time like finding a way that Michigan State wins this game. I, I, this just seems like a Northwestern win. My my first prediction of this show, I'll go 75-70 Northwestern. All right. All right. I like that. And I have to agree with you on a lot of that. It's um, especially for a Michigan State team. It's really hard to slow down Northwestern. All, what you need to have happen is to have Lindsey Pulliam, Veronica Burton and Sydney Wood to all have off nights like they did against Nebraska earlier this year. I'm not going to predict that to happen. I think that this team rides that momentum from Ohio State 78-60 Northwestern over Michigan State. I love to see it. Um, you know, it's it's I think the one thing that Northwestern has to watch out for here, Ethan, you mentioned it, is size. That's what kind of hurt them in, in that Indiana game that they ended up losing. Um, one big reason why is because Courtney Shaw isn't in there. You know, Courtney Shaw has been out the past couple games, and it's really been noticeable. You watch this team play, and they're giving up points in the paint. You know, like people are just taking it from the bread basket. It's easy. It's easy for these teams. And, you know, I again, like I, I agree with you guys that, for for Michigan State to win this game, a number of things have to happen. And a lot of that does fall on the shoulders of Lindsay Pulliam and Veronica Burton, who, I mean, it's it's apparent watching these players that, you know, this is a special, special backcourt for the Northwestern Wildcats. And, you know, I, I'm happy that <laughs> that we are here to see it because, you know, Veronica Burton, she's she's com- she's criminally undervalued across the league, but uh, you watch you watch her play, and it's astounding what she can do on the basketball court. Um, but you know that that being said, I think Northwestern really does have to watch out for those points in the paint, and that's that's for Michigan State to win. That's going to be a big key. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Veronica Burton and Lindsey Pulliam, you know, will play well in this game, and I'm going to go 67 to 50. Northwestern wins. Okay, that's a that's a bit of a route right there. It is a bit of a route you mentioned how talented this team is. And and before we move on to men's basketball, I just want to say how, how much of a bummer it is that we didn't get to see this team in the tournament last year when they did have a little bit more size with someone like Abby Scheid who could stretch the floor and play the, on the perimeter. And even our own Ab- Abby Wolf, who Sports was, own. was a beast down low uh, at the center position. So it, it's, it's just, it's such a bummer that we didn't get to see that team, but this, this, this year's team is, is, is pretty darn good themselves. So, uh, excited to see where they go in the future, but we'll move on to men's basketball. They're taking on a very, very good Purdue team. Lots, lots of just good teams in the Big Ten 
this winter right now in a variety of different sports. Northwestern men's basketball is struggling. Sam, why don't you kick us off here? I mean, it's, guys, it's do, you remember, do you remember when the Northwestern Twitter account tweeted, we are like one of the, like the first school top 20 men's basketball, top 20 women's basketball, top 20 football. That was like eight losses ago, maybe like in a row. Yeah. Northwestern has given up 80 points in six of their last seven, but We've all rooted for Northwestern before. What do they do? They love to give us some hope. I think they're going to come out and look strong in the first half, come down to a nail biter, and just blow it horrendously at the end. I got 58 55 Purdue. I want to pick Northwestern men's basketball to win. I can't in good conscience do that right now. That's all I'm going to say. 58 Certainly. Certainly a unique take to have Northwestern men's basketball blowing it in some horrendous fashion at the end. We all saw the Illinois game. Um, it was ah. tough. Anyway, uh, this Purdue team, I mean, you talk about size. This Purdue team has it in spades, and they've had it, you know. They've been one of the biggest teams in the NCAA for, you know, four or five years dating back to Isaac Harms. Um, it's, it's been a big, big program. Now, how does Northwestern combat that? Shooting. You know, Boo Booey has to have a great night, an almost perfect night. Adige has to have an almost perfect night for them to win this game. And I think that's just too much to ask of them. I really wish it wasn't, but I'm going to go Purdue 87, Northwestern 79. Yeah, one of, the, one of the tough things about Northwestern men's basketball right now is, you know, we talked about how it's so rare to have like off nights from all three uh, of, the, of the women's uh, big three. Northwestern seems to have just like an off night from someone every single, every single game, whether it's Boo Booey or Adige or, you know, sometimes Miller cops, not knocking down threes, Pete Nance will struggle. It's, it's kind of a, it's, it's just a weird situation. Like they just cannot figure seem to figure it out. They didn't win a game in January, which is just shocking to think about just not winning a game in the month of January. Um, the, the key for them is to figure out how to, or at least the key for the cats is to figure out how to slow down Travion Williams, who's averaging 15 points a game and nearly 10 boards. They've got sharpshooters in Sasha, Sasha Stefanovic and Brandon Newman. Purdue's really good at home too, even without fans. It's just, the cards just do not seem to be in uh, in Northwestern's favor. And I mean, they've, they've just got a brutal schedule. It's not getting much, uh, much easier heading forward towards March. It's a tall task. I, I, I just, I don't think Northwestern has it in them. I've got Purdue 71, 61. It's tough. It's tough to go into West Lafayette and win a game. And it's even tougher to go into West Lafayette on an eight game losing streak and win a yeah. game. That's, yeah. that's an insurmountable task, I think. So I just want to say, to clarify, I am the most optimistic about Northwestern and they're still going to lose. I still have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't want to talk about this men's basketball team anymore. I know viewers at home are probably thinking that handsome man in the top li- left, is he there just for eye candy? No. We're moving on to wrestling. Yes. yes I, I, legit, I legit thought I was just here for eye candy. Now I have to talk about something. Now I'm, I'm a little bit nervous now. So, <laughs> well, well, Abriel, you are our wrestling, as you call it, our wrestling expert. And so we, we couldn't have anyone else on this first show than you. Northwestern takes on Number nine, Illinois, they're an excellent team. Give me your thoughts because Northwestern seems like a pretty heavy underdog in this one. Yeah, I would say they're definitely the underdog in this dual meet against the number nine ranked team, as you said, Illinois. We do have great wrestlers, but the Big Ten is just a shark tank when it comes to wrestling. And I want to say, though, to point out some key matchups, at 125 pounds, we have Michael Diagostino. Is he number three ranked uh, wrestler at that weight class. Sebastian Rivera, who transferred to Purdue. We don't need him. No, we do need him. I'm, I'm kind of sad that he left. But Michael Diagostino picking up the slack. He's a third rank um, wrestler, as I said, in his weight class. And he made his debut in the tri meet um, last week. But against the number 16th rank, Justin Cardani um, again, for Illinois, I think that will be a win that hopefully Northwestern fans can look forward to. Because it, it might not, it might be, they might come um, far and few between in this dual meet against um, Illinois. Obviously, Yaya Thomas and Chris Cannon are two of our undefeated wrestlers. Yaya Thomas is number 13 in the country at 149 pounds, and Chris Cannon is number 22 in the country. 
uh, at 133 pounds, except they're going up against different competition. So Chris Cannon is 22nd ranked. He's going up against Lucas Bird, who's number 12 ranked at 133 pounds. So we're going to have to hope that he can pull off an upset there. And Yaya Thomas, one of my favorite wrestlers uh, right now this year, um, he's kind of been sitting on the bench the last year, but he's been like steadily improving. And I think like this is his breakout year. He also has pretty tough competition against Mike Carr, who's number seven and he's number 13. So those are two of the key matchups. Uh, another win that I think we can count on is maybe Lucas Davison at 197 pounds. He's the number 11 ranked wrestler there and he's not going up against ranked competition. So that's another win we can count on. Overall though, I think it's going to be a tough night out for the boys. Um, I think Northwestern loses 29 to 13 against Illinois. Yeah, to provide some context on how tough the Big Ten is, they have 11 teams ranked in in terms of wrestling. And they have 11 teams ranked in the top 25. It's, it's more teams ridiculous. than their name. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. More teams than their name. Like, we talk about, you know, SEC football being great, maybe ACC basketball, maybe the Big East back in its heyday. It's not, it's, it is nothing compared to <laughs> Big Ten wrestling. Uh, they pale in comparison. Come for, on, for more context, the state of Minnesota in college hockey, everyone knows. Exactly, yeah. For more context, Rutgers is ranked and they're 0 and 4. And if you kept like ranking, if you kept like, you know, listing the ranked teams, Northwestern would be 34th at 1 and 4. So it's not like Northwestern has, you know, is, is bad at wrestling. It's just this collection of teams in the Big 10 is absurd. That these these two teams, Illinois and Northwestern have one common opponent. It's Purdue. Illinois beat Purdue 1917. Northwestern lost 28 8. So I have a hard time picking Northwestern when, when you, you know, just look at that. Yeah, I understand small sample size, one common opponent, but it's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty substantial margin. So I'm going to go 25 15 Illinois. I get, I think Northwestern keeps it a little close, but I, I still think the fighting line I get it done. All right. So if, as this show goes along, some phrases you might hear a lot. I can't in good conscience bet on Northwestern. That that might get thrown around. Is that going to be the motto of this show? Do you think it might be? You never know. It that would be sure. a little disrespectful to our wins basketball team. That's true. Regardless, Absolutely. moving on. My pick. We can't all pick the same team, right? I don't have a ton of reasoning why. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm just going to say it out there. I think Northwestern's going to win. I do. <laughs> That's our upset of the week right okay. there. Now, I, I, have, I have some context. Averill broke it down very nicely. He yelled a lot of stats and numbers, but it's about heart, Averill. We all know <laughs> when, when it comes down to things, and I think Northwestern just has the bigger heart, 1917 Northwestern. Both one, of the, one of the great things about heart is that you can't quantify it. You can't. It's, it's, it's immeasurable. Deep. It doesn't show up in a stat sheet. And that's exactly that's a great thing for this Northwestern wrestling team, as you know, looking at the stat sheet. It's not They're gonna ideal. sneak up on people. <laughs> well, I gotta say, you know, Sam, I love the heart. I love it. Um, but I also am not super jazzed that Ryan Deacon isn't out there for this Wildcat squad. And um, I'm gonna have to go with Illinois in this one, 25 to 10. Yeah, missing Ryan Deacon, I mean, who's who's when he's healthy, the, the number one wrestler in his weight class. And that's just, it's, that's irreplaceable for the Wildcats. And so when you have a situation like that, it's, it's just something that's tough to overcome. So that's, that's why I have the Illini taking it as well. Um, it's so tough. Like the, the thing about missing a guy like that is that all of a sudden that momentum that you, you were almost with, with Deacon, you were, you know, pretty close to guaranteed at least one win in a match. And, you know, you take that away and all of a sudden the air kind of falls out of this entire program. So, yeah. I don't want to not make it about the team, but I would suggest to Northwestern fans who are looking to maybe watch some wrestling to really try to look at it as individual storylines. Yaya Thomas is now emerging as one of the best wrestlers in the country. Can Michael D'Agostino fill the shoes of Sebastian Rivera? There are a lot of good wrestlers on the team. We might not win, but there are a lot of people that will win. On, you know, but it's, I know, I don't want to be the guy to be like, who cares about the team? But I don't want that to take away from the amazing performances we'll see 
from some of these Northwestern wrestlers moving forward. Well, Abriel, I appreciate you saying that because we need that perspective. And, and I want to ask you something. Would you say the future of Northwestern wrestling is bright? Well, I want to say that the future of these wrestlers are bright. Again, when you say Northwestern wrestling, do you mean <laughs> the team? Or I mean, I'm mean, sorry, I should be, should be more specific. The wrestlers themselves, the specific wrestlers. Oh, yeah, sure. We have a lot of talented wrestlers. Again, I love Michael D'Agostino. Yeah, yeah, Thomas, again, he's really showing up this year. Um, Chris Cannon, Lucas Davison, a lot of good wrestlers. So I, I would say yes, because I don't want to say no. It would, be, it would sound like a rude thing to say no to, uh, to say people don't have a bright future. That would be disrespectful. So yes, I'm going to say yes. Great. Anything right. else to add? Yeah. I, I think that's I, it. I think that's pretty solid. Why don't you take us away? Yeah, yeah we're learning on the fly here uh, at Weekly Pick'em. But yeah, with that, uh, you've been watching Weekly Pick'em. I'm Ethan Four alongside Sam Johnson. I want to thank my guests, Abriel Sirigar and Chris Burton for an excellent first show, debut show, no less. Um, we will see you next week with Weekly Pick'em here on Sports Night.